We are recording, and hey, hello, Internet. Welcome back to the Weirdo Watchless Podcast, the podcast that's slightly off, where we talk about movies, and movies more specifically from the Weirdo Watchlist, created by Tyler on Letterboxd. I am your host, and that is your other host. Hello. And, uh, yeah, let's talk about some movies. Let's talk about some movies. What I saw today, finally. You know what it is. I know what it is. Civil yeah. War. Yes, Captain America, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh Alex Garland, is that the name? Yeah. Alex Garland Civil War, my friend, which you've already seen, right? Yeah, I saw it like a couple weeks ago, but now we can yeah, actually like everybody like, else. Yeah. Talk yeah. about it more in depth. I think um, I think we touched a, a little bit about it. Yeah, probably. Maybe. When you when you saw it probably. Yeah. But uh the first thing I I remembered about your letterboxing was when Jesse Plemons popped up your your letterbox review popped in my head. I'm like, "Oh yeah." Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's in this, because he yeah. didn't show up for a long time, and he wasn't in it much, but goddamn, I would love to see more of that. Yeah, it turns out he, he wasn't even supp like originally supposed to be in the movie. The guy they got to play his part either got like fired or quit, something happened. Yeah, so he's still in. Yeah, no, Kirsten Dunst was like, my husband is Jesse Plemons, let's get him in for Whoa, a day. Oh, they're married? They've been married for a while, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Didn't know that. This is a little fun fact. Yeah. And no, and he yeah. did great. He fucking kills it. Yeah. He is terrifying in the movie. Uh, he's he's only, yeah, yeah, he's only in the one scene um, when they're like, yeah, like road trip. It, it's kind of like a road trip movie if you think about it. Kind of fucked up it, road trip, but. It felt like it. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, they end up on like his property or something after like roadside shenanigans with some other like uh, war photographers they know. Yeah. And they end up on his property, and then he, yeah, like, if you've seen the trailer, and if you've seen the movie by now, uh, he's just like, um, yeah, spoiler alert. Hate, hates anybody who's not a, a, a red-blooded American. If you're, if you're, if you if you're from outside America, you're fucked. Oh, man, yeah. It's like, what, what kind of, scene. what kind of American are you? It's like, uh-oh. Yeah, really great performances oh, from, yeah. from a lot of people. Um, I don't even know the main dude's name. Yeah, uh, I got the... the from florida uh yeah wagner mora i did not hear his name very much or i just don't remember it um this is i think this is like the biggest movie he's been in uh unless unless you remember the gray man i remember hearing about it for sure it's, it's yeah no you don't need to see it it's uh yeah 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 it's not good it's not like it's no good it's gray it's like <laughs> yeah. it's so mid uh yeah, no, that he did great. I mean, Kirsten Dunst was fine. Uh, everybody else was, you know, that that girl. Uh, who was that? She was great. Kaylee Spaney. She was fantastic. Yeah, she really, really, really good. She was also uh, Priscilla in the Priscilla movie. That is all clicking now. Wow. And, and I mean, she was fantastic in that too. And she's gonna be an alien Romulus later this summer. You know, I just saw the poster for that, and I noticed that I missed the trailer for that, which is fine, because I don't like to watch trailers. Yeah. Uh, but I did not know it was coming out that soon. I thought it was still just almost like a rumor, to be honest no, with you. No, trailer's it's been really out. It, yeah, it comes out, I think, in June, June, July. I'm such a fake, I'm such yeah. a fake alien fan. I thought <laughs> I had all four of the originals on VHS Fox video, but I don't. Only the first three. Boo. Anyway, yeah. No, I I thought Civil War was like really fucking good. I mean, really good. Really I know the, good. A lot of yeah, a lot the, of good. The big complaint I hear a lot is like it's too apolitical. Like it doesn't yeah. like, let you pick a side. And... You know, I've heard a lot of people talking about how people are complaining about that, which is interesting because I haven't seen anybody complain about it. Actually, I don't think. Well, it's no. a, it's a lot of like weirdos on like our, spend our too mutual much time friend Joe. I think might have said something Yo, like that. Yeah, but yep. he, he's also shouts not. Out. Yeah, shouts out to Yoda Joe. He's he also didn't really like, love it. He's also like not like a like a like a, a weird movie guy like you and me. He's yeah. he's like a yeah. normie. He he, he yeah. gets excited respect. for Marvel movies still. Yeah, respect, respect. Yeah. Uh, you know, I loved it. I really did like it. Um, it's, yeah. The, especially that I saw it in the theaters. I think I sent you that in the Snapchat. Um, I was happy I got to see it with that fucking sound. That last scene. The whole DC sequence it's was just so good. Awesome. It's awesome, it's, awesome. It's just, yeah, like cutthroat, white knuckle, edge of your seat, just mm -hmm. bang, 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 bang. You know, you're fucking 
whatever whenever they're in any combat scene in in any part of the movie you just like you really yeah. like feel it feel every like shot that gets fired every like lincoln memorial that gets blown up <laughs> every single one of them um and then huge spoiler here so if you don't want to hear it get before like 20 seconds the main character kristen dunst uh her her death is just so quick and like just almost just unsacrament a sacrimonious like just dead okay yeah. move on almost like there was yeah, a little moment like, but rookie, that was rookie, cool i love that yeah the rookie photographer you know she like just forces, there. forces herself into their little road trip to go to dc to like interview nick offerman the president you know like he's yeah. a, he's unpopular this guy they, they don't go they don't go into like much of like how this whole thing broke out which you know it's kind of like a negative for me is like i want to know why uh, a civil war broke out other than like this president was so bad texas and california joined together it's like i can't i how though explain yeah it would ruin the movie probably because some people would think that's not that bad I wish mean, our president would do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think, I think uh, anything that makes it divisive is probably bad. They they explain a little bit, right? Like he like third term president, um, yep. dismantled the FBI, and yep. uh, drone striked his own citizens. Yep. yep. So that I think I think those are like the main reasons why there's like the whole civil war going on. Yeah. Like how everything broke out, and then the whole time, you know, like he's presenting himself like. You know, like, America will prosper. These charlatans, these, you know, insurrectionists yeah. will will not win. And, yeah, the whole movie is yeah. just them going from, like, New York to D.C. to, like, get an interview with the president who has not been seen publicly for months. And, like, they, they want to, like, ask him the, the big question, you know, like, why, why are you such a big dick? <laughs> The hard, the hard hitting questions, like um, they really only want to be there to just watch him die. You know, shoot the shot. You know, yeah. like I feel, I feel, I felt the whole time like maybe they like this interview thing was like it felt a little flimsy. You know what I mean? Like especially purposely in the movie, but then like it really kind of they wanted to be there before the insurrection. No, you wouldn't before oh, before like they the, before the Western forces make it. Yep, because they have the insider Whitehouse. knowledge yeah. that. Oh, we're pushing on it now, and they got there just a day late, almost. Yeah, I thought, they, they, thought. They, they almost missed it, um, but they they nailed it. Okay, it was spoiler so, alert. It was so Sorry, good. I'm I'm done. So good, man. I'm excited. I want to see it again, but like, again, the sound has to be. You gotta have good sound. I'm not gonna watch this on my phone. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, this, that loved it. Uh, moving on from that, let's move on from that. What have you seen most recently besides um, the thing we just watched together? Yeah, we'll we'll talk about that in uh, like twenty minutes, I think. Um, so uh, I I I've mentioned this before, right? That the film club I'm I'm I partake in, right? Yes. It wasn't my pick last night. It was my coworkers and enemy of the show, Austin's pick. Hell yeah! And I'll I'll, I'll go through like the two movies we watched, but I'll start with his because he like his movie was first. Austin's movie was first. Oh, two people get to pick a night? Yeah, because there's six nice. of us, Respect. and, like, we only ever get, like, a good opportunity to meet up maybe once a month. Not enough room for Sam. Not enough room for you. No. It's okay. I'm so far away anyway. I'm just gonna yeah. cry about it. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, anyway, right, he, yeah. he's, like, pitching this movie. He's like, it's one of my dad's favorite movies, favorite date movies, when he was, like, first dating my mom. You know, like, he loves it. And Damn, I, he's hitting on you. Yeah, he's been begging me to show this movie. Okay. Um, and the movie opens up with Sean Penn walking down a railroad, and it's an older Sean Penn movie. And my coworker's first thought was to go, "Oh no, are we watching I Am Sam?" <laughs> where was where it? where Sean Penn uh goes full. Yeah. R yeah, yeah. yeah full R yeah. word. <laughs> full. Let's get it started by. <laughs> The Black, the Black Eyed, Eyed Peas. <laughs> uh, yeah. I got you. Uh, and what was it? It, it was it was a movie called Racing with the Moon from 1984 starring Sean Penn and Nicolas Cage. Mm. Pretty good movie, but there was a split second where we all thought, are we about to fucking watch I Am Sam? And is I Am Sam 
his dad's date movie? Because yeah, that would be that even was, fucking weirder. That was the crazy, the crazier thought too. Mm. So of course, like we're all we're all like laughing about it, and then the the the, the mere thought of Sean Penn and I am Sam, like just changed the entire tone of the movie, because almost oh, no. anything Sean Penn did would quickly be attributed to I am Sam. <laughs> oh boy. And and the kind of and the kind of was, character he plays in was that a detriment? Was that a detriment to you guys enjoying the movie no. how it was supposed to be? I no, guess? no. We we all still we all still enjoyed the movie. What we were able yeah. to like, like put the movie above yeah the the crass and uh, untimely jokes that some of them were making. Oh man, I would talk the whole time if it was if I was there. Let's be real. Uh, Let's it, be real. It, it, I would yeah. have had to. There's too many jokes that would run through my head that I couldn't hold them in. Some of them, some of them the were just power. easy layups. Easy layups. Yeah. Some of them. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, uh, and, and, but the movie the was good though. It was a good movie. Yeah, no, we okay. all we all enjoyed it. Um, Should I watch it with my girlfriend? Yeah, no, it, it's it, like yeah, pretty good movie. I don't know where it's streaming. Um, it is. I'll find it for my girlfriend. I love uh, it. I guess it's on Paramount Plus with Apple TV or however the Apple TV. Oh, okay, I don't show love her that things. much. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. Up, babe. Love you. Anyway, uh, yeah, and yeah. The, the cool. little little plot detail about uh, enemy of the show Austin. He's got cerebral palsy. Yeah. Okay. So he 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 also finds jokes like like that, like like insanely funny <laughs> he's, he's got the pass yeah he's got he's got the pass for yeah so Respect. to speak so, so to speak. he's just giggling and laughing his fucking ass that? off the entire time and just thinking about some like just thinking about like the jokes that were that were, were brought up can i get him stoned and then watch a movie with him because that sounds really fun he, he good chance he's fucking stoned right this instant my man, yeah, no, he, my man. He he would be delighted at the thought of that. <laughs> Fuck yeah! All right, bet. Uh, so okay, so good movie. Good movie. Uh, what was the second movie you guys watched? Uh, the second movie, right? So my coworker Sharbs, he he, he yes. he's seen plenty of fucking movies. So he like he oh can. Pull... Sharbs is a guy. Yeah. It's a sausage honestly, fest. honestly, I no, I thought it was Austin's girlfriend. No, I thought Sharps was Austin's girlfriend this whole the, time. I mean, those two might as well might as well be boyfriend Cute. boyfriend. But yeah, yeah. yeah anyway, fun. like yeah, he, he's big in the oh, movies. Oh, for me, baby. We no, you fucking met him when we saw Junkhead. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, okay, that's funny. That's Sharps. Okay, yeah. now it's in my head. There's a connection. Sharps, shout out, Sharps. Uh, it was nice to meet you, and now I know that I follow you. He, he and... doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't listen to the podcast. <laughs> I'll clip that part and send it to him. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, yeah. Go. So movie, movie. We're watching. We're watching the movie. He picks um, like the past few movies he's picked. Terrible movies for for enemy of the show Austin, right? Yeah. We last movie he picked was like a nineteen fifties uh, noir film, black and white. I thought it was excellent. He hated it. I probably saw your reviews. What was it called? Uh, Kiss me deadly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So he's like, you know what? I'll throw Austin a bone. Throwing him a bone, easy pick. And he yeah. picks uh, 1972's What's Up, Doc? Barbara Streisand, couple other people, and it's a another great movie, right? Really, I need to see that. And it's really charming and delightful and, you know, like, super fucking I love funny. That. Yeah. Those are good words. Those are good. He, Sharps describes it as just the most unhateable movie he could think of that Austin had not seen. <laughs> wonderful and yeah. everyone there is like laughing their asses off just gut busting you know yeah and, and like um two of the other film club members they like their girlfriends were there too to watch and yes. they were like this might be the best movie i've ever seen they were also pretty stoned <laughs> during this part but oh man this is making this night sound great yeah and then austin's saying like i don't get it <laughs> What's going Tell me he on did here? Not like it. What's going on here? And oh. and you know my co my other coworker's girlfriend was trying to like justify like no listen this, this is a very Monty Python coded and those Monty Python guys were the inspiration for South Park so you should be into this. <laughs> and then Austin drops the most insane fucking line of dialogue. 
I have ever heard out of his mouth. Yeah. He, he like, after hearing, like, you know, like, th- this could be, like, the, the fucking, like, fish with legs walking onto land for South Park, right? In the evolution of comedy? Yeah. He goes, but they're not being racist, though. <laughs> <laughs> and we had to fucking pause the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I fucking burst out laughing. I was laughing so fucking hard. Because this is the most insane <laughs> thing I've ever heard him say. <laughs> it's like, all these fucking, like, quick, snappy dialogue jokes. All these, like, stupid little bits and shenanigans. And then he's just saying, like, but they're not being racist. None of these jokes are racist. That's good. Yeah. And, like, you know, like, again, like, the, he's expecting the kind of jokes like South Park's saying where, like, you're laughing at Cartman for being the asshole, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and for being just that, that, just saying the most outrageous shit. And this movie was called what again? What's up, Doc? <laughs> okay. Family-friendly comedy. Very, yeah, very, very charming. Very South Park. Yeah. You could, you could, it's one-to-one, really. Yeah. If there was racism, one-to-one. And then, and then you know, like, very shortly after we, like, collect ourselves, we get back into the movie, and 20 minutes go by... And there's a there's a beat of silence when we've all like stopped laughing at a joke, and Austin again says, "Not that I like when the jokes are racist, but <laughs> still try to justify what the fuck he was talking about." Should be a stand up comedian. It was in, it was it was by far one of the funniest things he's ever fucking said. <laughs> it was just so God. fucking insane. <laughs> But anyway, so yeah, like rest of the movie happens, you know, wacky hijinks. The crux of the movie is right. Barbara Streisand is just an agent of chaos who's looking to just drive people fucking insane. And there are four identical briefcases. One has jewels. One has government secrets. One is just Barbara Streisand's personal luggage. And one, and, um, one has rocks, igneous rocks. And, you know, different characters are going after different cases. They're going after each other's and they all get mixed up and shenanigans happen surrounding these briefcases. Was it actually kind of funny? It was, it was hilarious. I fucking loved it. Oh, okay. I want to watch this. Sounds great. It sounds very, uh, Monty Python. Yeah. It's again, it's just, it's just a movie where shenanigans and hijinks ensue. I love those things. Yeah. And Barbara Streisand. It's again, it's just a charming and unhateable movie. But Shout Austin out, didn't Barbie. find it that funny. God damn it. Glowing reviews, gut busting comedy from everybody else except for him. <laughs> I wonder what movie I could I would show him to impress him. It'd have to be something like actually like Brain Dead Stupid like Bad Boys 2. <laughs> Bad Boys 2 is great. It is a great movie. But that's the kind of movie he's They're expecting. Yeah. They're making a new one. Um, Again. <laughs> nuts i thought they were done they should i mean i thought they they should they should be done but i guess the last one made enough money to justify a new one i guess i don't even remember what happened i think there was like a long lost son or something yeah, like no, yeah very, very you're fast absolutely and furious right. yeah long lost son michael bay has a cameo in the movie but he's not even credited as like producer interesting very interesting yeah I think it was going to be like Will Smith's first major movie since the Oscars anyway. <laughs> yeah, safe bet then. Just yeah. a franchise one that he's done? Yeah, easy easy grab. I mean, you know, it, I, I, I don't know if I'll see it because again, like, not, not, not anything to do with Will Smith. I couldn't give a shit, you know? Yeah. But, yeah. You know, like, the last, like, Bad Boys for Life, which is actually called Bad Boys 3. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, that one doesn't feel like a, like an official Bad Boys movie because Michael Bay didn't direct it. Interesting. And while it's the most competently made Bad Boys movie, right? It doesn't have the Bad Boys juice to it. Yeah. It's not. It's not fucking coke fueled, hyper masculine, or like fucking himbo or tourist, insane oh man, Michael Bay behind the yeah. camera. We need him. It does. It doesn't feel like it's trying to threaten me the entire time. I want to see Ridley Scott do a Bad Boys movie. That would be a disaster. <laughs> or Wes Anderson. There's gonna be an AI of that eventually. An Some, AI. Somebody's gonna yeah plug that. Bad in. Boys, but directed by Wes Anderson. 
don't do it, guys. Don't do it. AI is, is not good. Just go. Gra just grab your camera phone and go outside. Yeah. Can I tell you what I watched yesterday? What did you watch yesterday? Late Night with the Devil. We can talk about that one, too. My God, it was kind of fun. It was all right, you know? <laughs> yeah. I was going to really overhype it for a second. Uh, the ending was really cool. I really liked that, but, like, it was a little cheap looking. <laughs> yeah. Very, yeah, fine. Like, pretty low budget, and it, it is really fucking funny in the beginning of the movie when there are, like, 11 production company logos being thrown at you for four minutes. Oh, yeah, what was with that? It was insane, is what that was. But, um, yeah, no, I mean, David L. Smelchian, he, he was pretty fucking great. Uh, it, good to see yeah, him, like, in true. an actual leading role instead of, like, some guy who shows up for five minutes, you know, like, in every yeah. other movie he's been in. Shouts out Dark Knight. Um, yeah, shouts out Dark Knight. Duck Knight. Good movie. Duck Detective. Um, Dark Wing Duck. Uh, anyway, movie was freaking great. I really, it was funny. The, uh. The, the not the host, which is played by that guy, which I, yeah. I'm not going to say his name because I'm, I'm too high. David um, Delsmelchian. But his assistant comedian guy who was just yeah. at the podium, that guy was funny as hell. Uh, like, the shit that he had to do was very funny. Not his dry-ass humor made me laugh. Like, they were, they were on the nose with how shitty, like, some of that late-night humor it can be. And that guy just delivered them, like, left and right. I thought that was fucking great. Uh because it was a fun movie and it was kind of scary yeah. at one at a couple t you know a couple scenes were pretty tense but like overall it was I just like, like yeah like I'm when they grip yeah when they do like the possession on the stage in front of the cameras that was insane right they mm -hmm. they they bring the girl out who's possessed by the devil late night um mm -hmm. and like show that off and then and then like the the um what the fuck is it what the fuck is his name the the guy who's like the the non-believer right Oh sure, sure, sure. Uh, like they, they got like some, they got like some bozo who's like um, there to just disprove everything that's happening, right? Yeah. And like. Yeah, he was annoying. He was a piece of shit. It's somebody that you just rooting against. Yeah, the entire time, and then nice. and then yeah. he fucking beefs it at the end of the movie, which is funny. But yep. um, and then like his whole scene where he's like hypnotizes the audience into thinking what they're seeing is actually happening, and then kind yeah. of going to get like disproving all that which i thought was really cool and then like well what if we look at the footage let's look at the footage that that whole that, that shit scared me it, okay so i feel like looking back at it maybe it really built up a little bit too long but like when it finally froze on that frame uh spoiler alerts for this movie um and like you saw the wife standing behind him and then it cut to him for a second and you could see her arm on his shoulder. That was it. That was it. It was just a tiny little doop doop arm on the shoulder. And it fucking that part made me scared. I was yeah. actually scared. And I was like, damn. It's got it's got its really Simple. effective moments. Effective. Yes, it really did. Uh and I really liked just the end. Once once like you kind of figure out like, oh, like I piece this, your piece, you piece it together, you know? Um, it tells you, rather. Yeah. And he just goes into these almost, like, layers and layers of, of hell, really. Um, that was sick. I really See, liked that. I didn't, I wasn't a big fan of that, mainly because it breaks formula for, like, format for the movie. Right? The whole yeah. movie is presented as, like, we found this footage of this late night with the devil... Yeah, we we this was a broadcast that aired only only once and never seen again, and we found it. We found it, and we and I guess we also had behind the scenes footage that was also recorded. Yeah, uh, yeah, I thought that too during those. Like, yeah. no way are they just recording this and then finding this footage. This is yeah. that's goofy. I didn't think that at the end though. I understand um, like why that would take you yeah. out of it. And then yeah, uh, so so like yeah, like he's going through all the circles of hell, and then it just cuts from like perspective of like us being shown the broadcast, and then just to his perspective of what he's going through and yeah like uh, right, like that that kind of like took me out of it as, as like cool as like some of it was and him like going through like piecing together all the guilt and the bohemian grove and all that stuff yeah. it just like if the movie hadn't just spent like 70 minutes 70 80 minutes being sh like here's a video we found i yeah. w i wouldn't be like complaining as much about it so, yeah i I can see what you're saying. 
I loved it because, like, it the movie changed perspective and, and, and with the main character, with yeah. that guy's character. I mean, he's falling into this, so, like, we our role as, like, an audience kind of fully shifts, and I think it effectively really worked on me because, uh, I mean, probably just because I'm I was tired of shit and whatever, but, like... I didn't even think about it. I didn't think about that movie shifting that way. It just did. And I was, like, in his headspace, I feel like, a lot more, or maybe. You know what I mean? Like, it just changed the perspective of the thing, and it just gripped me hard. Sure. Uh, and that's why I liked it so much. Like, it just, it got trippy. And the more it fell into it, the more it felt like it broke those layers even more and more. Uh, and that's, yeah, it kind of dissolved out of reality. I guess this is why I liked it, but uh, yeah, definitely an interesting concept. Yeah, with the, with the found like that. Technically, it's a found footage movie, and I don't like that's interesting because it's all so edited and shit. So you usually, you know, you think of found. I think of found footage as something completely different, but yeah, yeah. this is fantastic. Yeah, no, I again like it's it's just a really fucking fun movie. Um, yeah, good Halloween watch. Yeah, respect yeah, Shutter. Yeah, shout out to Shutter. It's it's on Shutter right now. Shutter, if you uh, want to sponsor the podcast, um, all I want is just a subscription for free because uh, I'm broke. Just went to school, just finished up. You know, it's it's a pretty heartwarming tale if you want me to tell it. But, uh, <laughs> Shutter shout out. Uh, what else did Shutter just put out? Something else that's. Oh, I saw that Nicolas Cage movie. Uh, but the, the, the it was the, like the Quiet Ar- Place Arcadian? diet, something like yes, that. Yes, Arcadian, Arcadian. Yeah, uh, it was really interesting, and I a lot of the negative reviews were talking about the shaky cam because it feels like it was recorded mostly purposefully like this sometimes. Yeah. Um, uh, and it was it was kind of nauseating at points, but otherwise, really fun. If, especially if you just got a Shutter account and you just want to throw something on, not a bad watch. And and the monsters in those movies you will love the design you will love the design that's, that's the biggest thing i keep hearing is like it's got some of the best creature design in like it's in years it's interesting it's just one type of creature but like the way it like travels together and the way it like attacks it it, it is just imagination central uh okay. up in that character so that's why i would watch it and it's and it's not even prominently in the movie it's very just snippets because you know it's not it's very much focused on the family, and then it's it's like a quiet place. How much do you see the monsters in a quiet place? Too much, you know. <laughs> a little bit too much, maybe. Uh, but like, it's about that much. Okay. So it feels like a quiet place diet. A little bit. But recommend. Okay. Recommend. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Uh, you know what? We do have to get going on this on this episode. I know I have a million other movies I could talk about, but I really do want to talk about this week's episode this week this, this week's movie of the episode oh uh, yes yeah so so cheating yeah. cheating by who, who, uh, uh, bill, uh, bill plimpton bill plimpton right? yeah not to be confused with former president bill clinton this yep. is bill i thought plimpton. it was by bill clinton until like about 30 minutes into the movie i'm like no way that's that's kind of, i don't believe you <laughs> yeah 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 you're right you're right um no but Cheating by Bill Plimpton from what 2013? 13, 14. It is on the oh 14. Okay, so it's on the weirdo watch list, and I it, ob, for obvious reasons, uh, let's let's talk about it. First off, I want you guys to know that it's it has like no dialogue. Yeah, no, and I didn't I about, didn't expect that. I didn't uh, expect it either because yeah. of the 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 voice list, the cast list. Yeah, like I saw it, I'm like, okay, there's like 10, 20 people in this movie. Okay, cool, but no, they, <laughs> it's not dialogue. It's just people going. Eh. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of sexual noises. We'll talk yeah. about that. Um, but first off, did you did you we watched it together? We did watch it together, which is yeah. the first time we've done that in the, on the podcast, which is fantastic. Did you like it? I did like it. I I was you know uh, there there like, um, some some of the bits towards the end, kind of was like um, okay, what are we doing here? Yeah. But um, for for the most part, I did still yeah like enjoy it quite a bit. Yeah, I was fully on board the whole time pretty much i loved it uh a couple times i got kind of lost in the weeds i'm like what the hell is happening yeah but i think that's maybe part of the charm of the movie because it's very much like uh the 
time and, and things that it just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't have to make sense. Yeah. You know, it's, like it's... You're, you're falling in and out of, you know, moments that are happening now and the moments that are just spread over this time. It, it's so, it's masterfully showing like this passage of time, like, oh, here's the segment from when they were happiest in their marriage. And for like, you know, you could tell it was a long segment of time, but it's just one scene. Uh, wow. And the music. Wow. Yeah. Now they, they they do like a whole opera bit while they're you know like <laughs> yeah yeah giving each other like goodbye hug as the husband goes to work in the morning and they and like the hug turns into a whole like oh. operatic dance number you know then they, oh, she, I love they're that. like both singing opera and doing all sor- sorts of stuff it's like it's an incredibly well animated movie for how like hand drawn it like crudely hand drawn it is yes you know like oh every literally every frame of painting so damn good yeah uh like every single like image that was passing by me was like interesting and some of the transitions happening like just not even transitions between scenes but like i don't know like the way like a thing would shape into something else and then form out i don't know that man is weird Oh, interesting for sure <laughs> yeah. he's from portland as hell you know what i mean um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um wow um can we try to explain what the hell it's about if for the people who didn't see it so it was hard to find uh yeah. if you can rent it or go rent it i think you can actually go buy it on his site for 20 bucks or oh, something okay. like that um and honestly after watching this like i recommend doing it man it's it's <sighs> There's a yeah. lot of work put into it, probably, yeah. you know, by that man. Um, and it tells the story very, very well. Let's figure out what the story okay, is. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, yeah. it's. I feel like it's pretty straightforward. It's just there's a lot going yeah. on. So, like, all right. Yeah. So, man and a big big guy. He's a big guy. Big man. And, and, and a woman. Like, they, they start, like, they, like, fall in love, right? They get happily married, happiest marriage ever. Again, they're doing a whole oh, opera, so opera dance happy. numbers in their, in their kitchen. Um, and... You know, they're just living the best life they could, you know. Uh, she She's like a housewife, you know, stay, staying home. He's doing all the work, mowing the lawn. And women all around him keep trying to get, like, flirty. They're, like, taking off their clothes, give a, giving phone numbers. And then he's, he's like, no. Despite what you think the movie's titled, he is not cheating. Yet. Not doing it. Oh, <laughs> Um, so, yeah, like, you, you get the idea that the, you know, super faithful couple, very into each other, um, happy marriage going on, they're banging. For sure um, they are. Yeah. And one of the, one of the floozies who's trying to get with them gets, gets a little jealous, and while they're out shopping, you know, the, the mm. husband and wife, you know, women be shopping, she, she, you know, like, he's all, like, get, you know, I think, I think you got up to go to the bathroom at some point, like, during this scene. I did during this yeah. point, but I, I yeah, I constant you, you helped me piece yeah. it together. Yeah, there's, there's a big moment where you had no context. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, oh, no, I was with the care. Anyway, go yeah. on. So, um, yeah, so, like, husband's just, like, rolling his eyes. He's like, uh, women, am I right? She's shopping, and then she, um, gets sent into a changing room. By the one, by one of the floozies at the gas station, uh, who's like trying to like hit on him and bang him because he's just such an attractive man. Look at his mm-hmm. muscles. Mm, he was look his ass. Ass. Um. So then, yeah, like she goes into the changing room, and in the changing room is a bunch of male mannequins. She she gets confused, like, are just a bunch of naked dudes in here? What's going on? Quickly finds out, just mannequins. And then, and then the the nefarious evil woman takes a quick picture, quick Polaroid of the woman changing while she's like completely undressed, completely in the nude, in front of these mm. nude male mannequins. Now, now she's got bait set up. Set up. Oh man. The wife doesn't notice. Life continues. Um, husband goes back to work at the gas station. Same woman from the, who took the picture shows up. With the Polaroid after getting rejected by the guy, he's like, "Ah, oh, you won't, you won't bang me." Well, look at what your wife's doing, and it's a picture of her naked, surrounded of what looks like a bunch of naked dudes. And that's mm-hmm. when you got back from the bathroom and saw she was like with a bunch of naked dudes, and I had to, had to explain. Yeah, all mannequins. Yeah, 
So this dude is just devastated because he sees that his, his wife is cheating. So I didn't know that it was so sad. So I was fully in this main character's <laughs> headspace of yeah. like, oh, my God. I was just as heartbroken as he was. I was like, how did she get this photo? What the fuck has she been doing? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, oh, the next, the following scene is this man Basically, I don't know if he was trying to kill himself in his car, but basically he was driving a, yeah. so recklessly and everything just like works out for him. He, he like tries to jump into a train. He goes through the train. He tries to drive off a cliff. He like gets sprung back by the, the fence and he's just like just driving recklessly. He's just heartbroken and he just feel it. Oh, yeah. this man is beating his head. He's so sad. Yeah, he's this almost heartbroken man. Um, Some say he died that day. He died that inside. day, yeah, on the inside. Um, so then, in, like, uh, instead of, like, confronting his wife about this, he tries to, right? Tries to, mm. like, like bring up the photo, like, like sets it on the table. She doesn't notice it. She's happy, just like, I'm gonna bake my husband a cake. Um, and puts it on the picture, doesn't notice it. And then uh, the husband gets the bright idea. He's like, you know what? If she's banging all these dudes, I'm gonna bang all these women. Kind of get got, get back at her, so then he actually starts cheating. Name drop, title drop, title drop, cheating. Title drop doesn't happen in the movie like that though. As funny as that would be, <laughs> wouldn't it? That'd yeah, be... just bang bangs the first woman and they're just cheating. <laughs> that, ta- <laughs> that would take me right out of the fucking movie. <laughs> yeah, he cheats a lot. Yeah, no, he he does not stop banging random he women. He does not, he and that's why it's called. You know what? That's I think I figured it out. That's why I it's I called figured cheating. it out. It's just that's, finally clicking. Yeah. Um, so then eventually, yeah, like, he keeps going on about it. The wife eventually does figure it out, like, oh, my God, he's meeting all these broads at this motel. So uh-huh. let me let me get this guy to kill him. And this is a funny scene, right? Yes. When, when like, the, the, the murder for hire is, like, getting his arsenal together, he, pu- he pulls out three different grenades from a different drawers. <laughs> yeah. And he's like so many out, weapons. Like, yeah, like pulling out like nunchucks, like a fucking like medieval flail, a kata- like different sabers, a bow, no yeah. arrows. Um, <laughs> pulls out like uh, like cattails, a fucking bouquet of flowers, and then puts it back, and yeah. then pulls out three whole nukes. Yeah. From his from his fucking like dresser. Which later, as they're like hanging out of his coat, look like butt cheeks, and somebody grabs them. Somebody so grabs them. That happens yeah. later. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's a pretty great moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's got this whole arsenal like set up. He like goes to the motel, you know, like meet, meets the uh, uh, meets the wife, ready to go kill this guy. Um, and then he's like ready to like, bust down the door with a shotgun, and then she's like, "No, don't use the shotgun. Use your little knife." He's like, oh, okay. And then he's ready to kick down the door. He's like, no, don't do that. Sneak in. So he's got this huge lumbering... Not He's like a big guy already, but now he's even bigger and clankier because he's yeah. got four huge nukes hidden under a trench coat. <laughs> he's like tumble it around trying to like uh, get the drop on this guy. But that yeah. failed. He, did, he didn't get the drop on him. He, did, he, he, yeah, he didn't succeed. Out. Yeah, knocked out, left in the street. Yeah. yeah. And then the movie kind of goes off the rails a little bit. A little bit, uh, yeah. With, with, was he a psychic? What the fuck was he's he? He's like some sort of, like, <laughs> magician man. Yeah. Yeah, she runs off crying, and she gets carried. She got, like, passed. She gets knocked out in an alleyway accidentally. And a man picks her up and brings her into this, like, closed theater. Mm-hmm. And this part scared me so much. I was like, this is turning into a horror movie turns out fine it's fine yeah but like the music and everything it really hit me i was just like damn this is just kind of scary uh i felt so much for this person <laughs> this woman i was so I was so fearful for her <laughs> but it was okay because he was a a what what was he just some sort of like the prestige uh you know like yeah. hugh jackman the prestige i've got a machine former yeah you know i'm 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 uh, uh, jeff goldblum the brundle fly man i've got a machine yeah and he does it in front of a live audience. And it's it's like it's like some sort of like yeah, soul swapping machine. Yep, trans soul machine, and it can take two people's souls and switch them in their bodies. So basically, 
basically a body switching machine. Your yeah. mind switches. And then, yeah, um, the wife gets the idea to swap bodies with the wi- the, the all the all the women he's banging. So then yeah. she's still so then she's like, I can kill my husband this way. I can do it with my own hands, or I can also bang him as these women, and st- and then I still get to bang my husband at least. Yeah. So there's like yeah, so like she like does that for a while. <laughs> Yeah, and just never, never bothers like confronting her husband about it in in her own body. Right. Uh, ev- eventually, like the husband like figures out, you know, like you could like he's able to. She's got like green eyes, so she's able to. The husband's able to like tell. It's her with the gr- with bright green eyes. Um. And then, like, yeah, eventually, like, figures out. Oh my God, you're my wife. How could I have done this? Wait a minute. And then he pulls out the picture, like explain this you've been banging all these dudes and then she's like oh, yeah you silly goose that's a it's mannequin him. you can see the mannequin tag on his butt cheek and then he laughs about it. it's like oh how silly he of laughs me. and then goes through every emotion available in like five seconds yeah, because <laughs> like i'm such yeah. an idiot i've been banging all these women but my wife is here now yeah he's getting from sad to angry to it's funny and there was one moment that the frame he turned into like this frightful like super scared like he's like oh fuck i fucked up <laughs> and that made me laugh uh because he came to like he's like oh my god i can't believe i fucking did this um i liked that scene uh, it yeah. was really good uh but then something goes awry something goes wrong with the machine and both women oh wait no does she get stabbed yeah no she like the the um Right. The the original uh, floozy, the redhead, um, mm. it's her. It's now now she's like like all right now I get to bang this guy, um, and then she's like, I have to get in, the wife's like I gotta get in the machine, but the magician's not here. I don't know where he is. I'm doing the machine That's myself. Right. She That's breaks right, yeah. it, and then she they're kind of like half swap. The swap never like fully happened, and then she gets stabbed by the original murder guy with the nukes in his in his trench coat. Yeah. He comes back. The redhead turns out to be, like, that guy's wife. He's like, my wife's cheating on me, too. <laughs> oh, my God. Do I stab the guy I was going to get paid to stab, or do I stab my wife who I'm angry at? Mm-hmm. I'll stab my wife. And then they have to figure out how to get their souls back in the right bodies, so they go back to, like, the carnival where they first met. Yeah. Um, Adorable. They get, like, electrocuted, and a shenanigan ensues. Like, just trying to get this going. That cop that was like the cop shows to his up, ankles. And handcuffed to his ankle, so, so he's funny. hopping around, <laughs> shooting. Oh man, that was funny. Uh, yeah, what an epic finale, like big yeah. moment. And then, and then, uh, yeah, they they get their bodies back, they kiss and they make up, and happily ever after. Yeah, they get they adopt a fish. <laughs> yeah, they really did. Yeah, they really did. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, all is forgiven. Which I, I think that's like one issue I have is like, but but it's like one of those issues that like if this issue like if he didn't do this the movie wouldn't happen right you know where it's like this yeah. needs to happen for the whole plot to move forward so I can't like stay too mad at it like if he just like introduced this like in the fucking first place before like going to bang these other women you know yeah. like he he should like if he just here's the picture of you with all these men, none of this would have happened. But again, then the movie wouldn't have happened. I think there was a moment where when he fully lost her, like she died. Yeah. Uh, there was that moment. Obviously, he cries into her eye and then she comes back alive. Yeah. But like, <laughs> there was that moment that like, it's not just forgiven, but it's almost like reborn. Like, it's, it's Yeah. Like that, that it felt... Like, there was that energy. He's like, okay, yeah, we fell back in love. And, like, it doesn't matter anymore because we're back into this love state, which is insane. Um, loved loved it. Yeah. God, this movie rocked. I really liked it. Yeah, no, it's, it's like, yeah, like, again, like, in- incredibly well animated, too. Like, it's... Insane. Like, the char- character design for, like, everybody is, like, yeah, like, so, so unique. And, like, a lot of, like, insane, like, perspective shots, too, right? 
And like, some funny shit actually happening yeah. in the movie, too. A lot. Like, there was a scene where a lot of the, like, so when he first started cheating and then, like, all the sexual stuff that would happen, but it would transform into something else. Like, a lot of it was, like, innuendo with his little gas thing where he's yeah, going like, gas. Gas going uh, into the gas hole, but or, that's actually like, supposed to be Windex penis. going on the window looking like splooge. That was you know insane. I mean? Yeah, I thought he really that did. Was funny. I, thought, I thought that was actually splooge. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was good. A uh, lot, lot of good stuff in this movie. Uh, God dang. Mm-hmm. And every scene feels like almost like a operatic, like, yeah, big, like it's all like kind of based on music because there's no dialogue. Um, I don't know if a lot of the music was probably written for this movie. Obviously that big opera song. We all yeah. know that song. So, but uh, yeah, some of it, it conveys emotion way, way more than just acting with dialogue could have, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. It, it did a lot with a little. It did a lot with a little. I feel yeah, like. Yeah, no, it's it's um, it's honestly like pretty incredibly effective for like. I, really, I felt like I lived these people's lives for yeah. for years and years and years, and it was like seventy some minutes long. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so like that's effective <laughs> for me. Um, if you can get in the right headspace and watch it, I can see how this would like go over some people's heads or if you're not like really invested in it yeah. as you should be like I, it just might get a bit like again like all right this is no... dragging on because some things drag on and it, it i think beautifully yeah there, there's <laughs> um, like no dialogue whatsoever it's just, you're just watching like, again like this silent cartoon that looks inc- that's incredibly weird to look at that's always doing all sorts of stuff so like it could, it could be pretty easy to be just like not understand it but if you if you can like get yourself invested in it which is like again like pretty easy to do um yeah. it, there there is like yeah a lot going on here that you can really like appreciate i think uh my girlfriend's home uh because I love her. I'm just so in love now that I've seen this movie. Um, I want her to watch it, kind of. <laughs> do I watch it again tonight? I, Is that to what you, I do? Man. Yeah. Tell I, me. Again, seven, Tell me. 72 minutes? Yeah. In and a out. good run time. I want to watch it again soon. For sure, for sure I do. Uh, what, what are you going to give it out of five? I am going to give it a three and a half out of five. Three and a half out of five. That's a beautiful score. I'm giving it five out of five. It's All a right. perfect movie. It is. It does exactly what it needs to do. I really enjoyed myself. Uh, five out of five. Go support this man. Yeah. No. Again, like, is he alive still? I think he is. Yeah. I checked. He's like fucking old for sure. Like, born 1946. This is a long letterbox biography, though. He his picture on letterboxd looked like one of the guys from the new wonka movie you know have you seen that i didn't see that no well then you're not gonna know the comedian guy from that movie remember okay um oh one thing uh, one thing i was like uh reminded by the um like the 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 crude art style right um yeah it just like the uniqueness of it all too reminded me of like john k right the running stimpy guy oh yeah but sure but like not in like um like i have i have like like th- good things to say about john k right this is mm. this is like john k and his art style if it had good stuff to say and actually yeah. had like cr- like r- like real creative merit cuz if you look at what john k does now it's just terrible <laughs> oh. on top of also just being a horrible person to work with allegedly oh. probably more than likely allegedly um yeah i think i'll it, so i it's obviously about a lot of crude stuff there's a lot of crude stuff happening yeah but it never feels crude for the sake of being crude it always feels tasteful but like in a funny way i don't know some yeah. of the most insane shit is happening on screen and i never feel like it's it's like jumping to a red and stimpy level yeah, yeah. by it, any any stretch of the imagination it, it's it's like uh, crude but it's mature about it yeah, you know, like, it, like of course, like it can show like real like thrusting action going on, but the real thrusting you see is only the dude's butt cheeks going up and down a little bit. Nothing else is moving in the frame. Oh, yeah. It's just his butt cheeks going up. Oh, funny. And then maybe you'll see underneath the bed just pounding pound town. Yeah. 
And then, yeah, like, all the innuendo of, like, the gas nozzle going into the hole, the Windex, be, like, acting like splooge on the windshield. Like, stuff like that. It, it's it's mature about it. Well, watch still, it with your kids. Yeah. I, I wouldn't. <laughs> I don't even got kids. Neither do I. Uh, I watched it with Mabel, though, and that feels a little wrong. I'm sorry you had to watch that, Mabel. <laughs> She's splutin' on the floor right now. Oh, hell yeah. um, Not splugin', splutin'. It's a different <laughs> thing. Uh, I have to take a picture of her. She's so fucking cute. I, dude, I can see it. <laughs> you, I can see it on your phone. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah! I'm sending that to my friend Mikey. That's me! Hey, that's you! Uh, yeah, I really liked it. Does it belong in the weirdo watch list? I, I was worried that it wouldn't, but I think it does. It definitely does. Because espe- especially by the time they do like the body swap and stuff, yeah. Yeah, gets real weird. Uh, there's nothing else really like it that I can think. Yeah, I mean, I you know, there's, it's so unique. He's got he's got his own sh- like plenty of his own stuff going on. Like he's got a huge library of animated stuff he's done. Yeah, might have to watch some more because it's it's he's really talented. And I guess he's got like a like a like credit on ABCs of Death Two. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that on his page. That's so, funny. I haven't seen that one, but neither have I. It's on Hulu. There you go. Maybe, maybe we watch just for whatever uh, letter of the alphabet he has. Yeah, for sure. Okay, let's let's spin the wheel. Shall you we know spin, what? We got a movie. Spin the wheel. To watch in a week or two or maybe three because I'm going on vacation, folks. Going on vacation, for two weeks. Yeah. So next next episode will be out. It'll be out when it's out. It'll be out when it's yeah, out. Yeah, just, just wait. All right, let's see what we got. And we have. All right, we have Kumiko the Treasure Hunter. Kumiko. Kumiko the Treasure Hunter. Yeah, let's see what that is. One Piece. Dude, if it's a One Piece movie, I'll lose my shit. New <laughs> chapter came out Any today? Goodness? It was insane. Oh, my God. Chapter 1113. <laughs> I don't know how to spell this. I, I found mind. it. Um, okay, so directed by David Zellner, who also... Okay, this is actually kind of a relevant movie because this guy is also directing Sasquatch Sunset, which comes oh, out later. I was just this. thinking about yeah. seeing that. No, it just it's already out now. And uh, directed like um, the Curse with Nathan Fielder and uh, Benny okay. Safdie. Yeah, that's actually insane. I'm like halfway through that. Kumiko the Treasure Hunter, 2014. Okay. All right, Frustrated cool. with her mundane life, a Tokyo office worker becomes obsessed with a fictional movie that she mistakes for a documentary. Fixating on a scene where stolen cash is buried in North Dakota, she tripped. This is fucking based off Fargo. Holy shit! Holy shit! No, I, I, dude, yeah. this is insane. No, this is fucking great. Oh, this is really great. Okay, I'm excited. Yeah, no, I'm actually fucking pumped for this. The most excited I've been for a weirdo movie in a while. <laughs> oh, wow, this is cool. I hope it's good. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm all I'm, right. Listen, I've been needing a goddamn excuse to rewatch Fargo anyway. <laughs> Yep, there you go. There you dude, go. I'm actually so Don't you know it? <laughs> dude, I'm pumped for this. Um, looks like it's just available to rent on the normal services. So, if you, yeah, it's shill five or six bucks depending on where you rent it, but... Cool. Will not be difficult to find like uh, some of these other movies we've picked. How's the ratings looking on Letterboxd? 3.6. Dave, uh, David right? Ehrlich, uh, famous movie critic, 9 out of 10. Uh, YMS, right. uh, 6 out of 10, so that's pretty good. good. We're in, we're in for a good it. movie if he gave it a 6 out of 10. Yeah, right, right. Hell yeah. Shouts out. Yeah, shouts out. Uh, Adam. Uh, okay. Well, that's, I mean, that's it for me. I gotta go, I gotta go hang out with my girlfriend and not cheat. Don't do that. It's bad. Don't, don't be if cheating. If you learn anything from the movie or the podcast, cheating is wrong. Boo. And it's probably a misunderstanding. Yeah. <laughs> Boo this man. Boo um, this man. All right. All right. That's the end of the podcast, everyone. Thank you for watching and listening. Be sure to watch Kumiko the Treasure Hunter for the next episode. And, uh, yeah. Let's, uh, let's end this thing.
See everybody.